Sound design. Okay, so what is the one way I have discovered to do crossover alignment that works every time? That's what I'm going to talk about in today's video. So in the last three videos, I've talked about several common ways that don't work. We looked at listening to a sine wave, we looked at uh, laser distance measure, and measuring average phase. And I showed you some scenarios and circumstances under which those methods will not work. Unfortunately, not every time at least. So for a more consistent approach, we don't need to look much farther than the L Acoustics preset guide. Now they're not the only ones to talk about this method, but I'm using their guide because I think a lot of people are familiar with it and because it spells it out pretty clearly. So if we look at the end of the guide, there's a section called pre-alignment delay values. And this says, if no acoustic measurement tool is available, it's possible to use pre-alignment delay values given in the tables in this section. And then if you scroll down, they have pages and pages of these pre-alignment values where you can combine one speaker with another and it gives you the pre-alignment values. And it's these pre-alignment values that are the key that was missing from the laser distance measure method that I showed to you in a previous video. So let's go back there. So just to remind you, here's our laser distance measure method. Um, imagine that I'm going to stand at this position with my laser distance measure, and I'm going to put these values into my calculation. So over here, I've just got a little calculator page set up, and I'll put in 48.87 and 47.74. And I see that I have a difference in distance of 1.13 feet. Now, uh, in this guide, among other places, it's going to tell us that we can get the geometric delay by dividing the path difference by the sound velocity. So let's do that. So we'll call this our geo delay. And we need uh, our difference in distance, so delta D. And we're going to divide that by the speed of sound. So um, let's call the speed of sound 1130. And this gives us seconds, so let's multiply that by 1,000 to get milliseconds. So that's pretty easy, one millisecond. And you already know what's going to happen if you saw the previous video, but if I put one millisecond into my delay here and we look at the prediction at 100 hertz, then we're going to see that we do not, in fact, have summation through the audience plane, we have this big, ugly null right in the middle of the audience. So this is not the result that we want. But if we had taken the time to create the pre-alignment values before we did this, we could have avoided this. So that's what I want to show you right now. Over here, I have another design open. And this just gives me the opportunity to compare one of those Milo with one of those 650p. And I created an alignment that I said, okay, this is fine, this is aligned, and I have three milliseconds of delay in the sub. So that's my pre-alignment value for this pair. So back over here, I'll call this pre-delay, and I'll say that's three. And then if we look at this guide, it says all we need to do now is align the pre-alignment delay with the geometric delay. So I'll just call this total is my pre-delay plus my geo-delay, and I get four. So let's try putting that in there. So back over here in my design, I'll change this from one to four, hit predict, and now we have a much better result here. So now instead of a null through the center of the audience, now we have summation pointing back this way. And um, we might be able to improve on this even more. So now we can look at a discussion of microphone placement in the audience to kind of balance out the errors. Um, but that'll be a discussion for another video. For now, I just wanted to prove that I can get the sound to go where I wanted it to go. Previously, with only a laser distance measure, uh, and not doing the pre-alignment values, um, I tried to align back here and then the sound just kind of went somewhere else. It didn't do what I wanted it to do. But now I can see it's pointed back at this microphone position here. So this is the entire method, creating a pre-alignment value and then modifying it in the field. So if this is so simple and it works every time, then why isn't everyone doing it? Well, I think it's for these three reasons. Number one, it takes some time, so it took me about two hours to set all of this up today. 
And if you were out in the field, you know, you would need to get out all of your equipment and set it up and make sure everything's working. Um, you also kind of need to know what you're doing. So you kind of have to practice with all of the pieces and make sure that you know how to use your audio analyzer and the DSP and the amp and the speaker and all that stuff. And then you have to actually have access to all that stuff. So I don't have access to any of these things. I don't have any of these things at my home at least. Um, so I would have to track them down and go out and find them to measure them. So because of these three challenges, I think it would take me personally many years, maybe decades to actually build up a large database so that I could walk into any room and whatever speaker was there, I would say, oh, okay, I have this in my database. I know the pre-alignment value. Now I can do my calculation quickly and get my alignment. Because that's gonna take so long, my suggestion is that we combine our resources and build a database together. So if you measure a few speakers and I measure a few speakers, and then we all put them into a database together where we can access them, then we can build a database of all the speakers in the world in you know a few years instead of decades. And the second thing I wanna suggest is that we could make an app to do some of the heavy lifting in the field for us. So we might have the measurements for speaker A and speaker B, but maybe we've never done the alignment before. And so if we don't wanna be uh, sitting there during our system setup trying to figure that out, we might wanna have an app or a calculator help us with that. So if you think this is a good idea, my first suggestion is that you test it out and prove it to yourself. As Mauricio Ramirez says, please don't believe me. So test this out, prove it to yourself, if it works for you and you think it's a good idea, then please fill out this survey that I'm going to link to below this video. Um, it's just a super short survey. You'll share some of your ideas of where you think this project should go and how it should get done. And that'll make sure that I'm actually moving in the right direction and building something that'll actually help people instead of just, you know, something for myself. So let me know what you think. Have you tried this in the field? Has it worked for you? And what are your ideas about building this project? Thank you. Sound design. Yeah.